Hello, Chemistry 30. This is our third lesson in the equilibrium unit. This is equilibrium graphing. In this lesson, we will explore graphing equilibrium shifts and we will work through six examples. An equilibrium graph represents the concentration of each chemical species at equilibrium over time when certain stresses are applied. Within the graph, we can see that each chemical species is represented by an individual line showing its reaction rate. An equilibrium graph requires the chemical equation as the title. And don't forget the axis titles that include the units for concentration on the y-axis and time either in minutes or seconds on the x-axis. Example number one. Draw an equilibrium graph for the following reaction when there is an increase in pressure stress. Pause the video and attempt this example. If there is an increase in pressure, then there must be a decrease in volume, which would shift to the side with less gas moles. Our reactants have zero gas moles and our products have one gas mole. Therefore, this reaction would shift left towards the reactants. And our equilibrium graph would appear as the following. Since we are shifting to the left and increasing the concentration of the reactants, we can see that HCl at the point of the stress will then increase and then flatline again, representing it as went back to equilibrium. Notice how this line goes up and then maintains. It does not go up and then back down. That is a common mistake. It increases and then flatlines. A shift to the left will cause both products to decrease. But we can see something else happening with H2 gas. When we change the pressure or volume, gases spike. Since we decrease the volume, that will cause the concentration of H2 gas to increase. It will first spike upwards and then it will decrease downwards because of the shift to the left. And then finally, Zinc chloride will just decrease, it will go downwards on the graph and then flatline. It is also important to note that solids are not affected by equilibrium, so therefore they are not included in an equilibrium graph. Example number two. Draw an equilibrium graph for the following reaction when there is an increase in temperature stress. Pause the video and attempt this example. Energy is represented on the products side of this chemical equation. Therefore, this is an exothermic reaction. If we are adding energy, we are then going to add products and the reaction will again shift to the left. And our equilibrium graph will appear as the following. We are increasing the concentration of the reactants, so HCl will move upwards and flatline. The concentration of both products will decrease downwards and then flatline again. Notice how there is no spikes in this graph. A temperature change will not spike the concentration of any species. Example number three. Draw an equilibrium graph for the following reaction with the addition of 1.0 moles of zinc solid. Pause the video and attempt this example. Zinc solid is insoluble. Therefore, it will not affect equilibrium and our graph will remain constant. Example number four. Draw an equilibrium graph for the following reaction with the addition of NaOH as a stress. Pause the video and attempt this example. 
NaOH is a strong base and it will react with an acid. Our acid is HCl. We will therefore remove HCl from the reactant side. So the equilibrium will shift left to replace the lost HCl. And our graph will appear as the following. We have initially removed HCl, so we can see that it spikes downwards in the graph. But then our reaction will shift to the left, increasing the concentration of HCl until it flatlines. For our products, we are just losing concentration because of the shift to the left. So both products will decrease downwards, then again flatline. Example number five. Determine the stress in the equilibrium system at point A, B, C, and D. Pause the video and attempt this example. At point A, I can see that we are spiking H2 gas. What's also important to note is that all species in the chemical equation are gases. So if this was a pressure slash volume change, all species would spike. Since it is only H2 gas spiking, I will assume that this is the addition of H2 gas. At point B, there is no change in equilibrium. Therefore, this could be a variety of different stresses that do not affect equilibrium. For example, a catalyst or an inert gas, at point C, all substances have spiked. They have all spiked. Their concentration has went up. Right away, if their concentration goes up, that tells me that there is a decrease in volume. Therefore, we have shifted to the side with less gas moles. The concentration of NH3 gas increases. And finally, at point D, there are no spikes in the graph. This represents a temperature change. If we look at the chemical equation, we can see that energy is on the products side, representing an exothermic reaction. If we focus on the other product, NH3 gas, we can see that it is decreasing. Therefore, we must be adding energy to this equation, adding products which would cause the equilibrium to shift to the left. So to recap, at point A, we have added H2 gas. At point B, we have not changed the equilibrium system, so therefore it could be a catalyst or an inert gas. At point C, we have increased the pressure and decreased the volume. And finally, at point D, we have increased the temperature. Example number six. Draw an equilibrium graph for the following reaction with a decrease in pressure stress. Pause the video and attempt this example. If we decrease the pressure, we must increase the volume. Therefore, we will shift to the side with more gas moles. We will shift to the left. And our graph will appear as the following. Since we are increasing the volume, that would mean that the concentration of all gases will initially decrease. And we can see that all of the gases have spiked downwards. But after the spike, we are shifting to the left. So the concentration of both reactants will increase and then flatline back to equilibrium and the concentration of the product after the spike will continue to decrease and then flatline at equilibrium again. Moving forward, we will complete Le Chatelier's Principle Laboratory.